welcome, welcome, welcome to another freaking burning hot day in the studio. Woo! I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm Brett Papa, and today's lesson is, say you want to expand out of the pentatonic. We do the pentatonic stuff all the time here. We mix major and minor. We do chromatic stuff. What if you want to do the modes, but you're like me and you don't know any? Well, I know a couple, to be honest, kind of. I know them by ear. I call them the I don't know in modes because I don't know what they're called, but I know what they sound like. So I'm going to give you an example of what that is today. So in our chord progression, we're basing it kind of an, an, an A minor, right? A minor is kind of our key center. So I'm going to use A minor pentatonic. Right? Okay, we might as well start with what we know. This is what I base everything on, whether it's a minor progression or a major progression. I think major or minor pentatonic, whatever whatever we're soloing over, I start there. So A minor pentatonic, since we're using A minor. And then I'm gonna look at the other chords, right? So I know I have a G. So right up, sorry, I'm out of tune, but you know. It's close enough for rock and roll, baby. Okay, so. <laughs> if I were just to stick to five chords, which is just root and fifth, that would work in my pentatonic. But since I'm using the whole chord and I have the third in there, that gives me this other cool note. Right, so I know when that G chord comes along in my progression, that note right there, which is the third of the G chord, is a possibility. Now if I look at the octave, Okay, there's my third in my G chord right there, because I have a G right here. Okay, it's the D shape of a G chord, but there's my G chord. And that note is now in it. So, I get cool licks like... So, all I'm doing there is I'm taking the seventh fret and bending it up a half step. And then I kind of play it like pentatonic, right? So, it's... And then I... So I go eight, 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 five, and then Okay, so that's something that you can do over the G, okay, in position one. Now you also have a G chord right here. And that's right where position three is. Okay, so That'll all work, right? Because you're hitting the notes of that G chord. In this case, my third's right here. Now that's not in pentatonic position three of minor, A minor. That's the scale of A minor, but here's if we, A minor pentatonic, I should say. But there's if we include that third of the G chord. So those are different things to think about. Think where those thirds of those chords are. And so right now, my pentatonic you know, scale that I'm using has turned into this. Okay, over the A minor and the G. Now, I also have C, which is typical, all those notes. Right? My root, my fifth, and my third of my C chord are all naturally in A minor pentatonic. Right? So, cool licks like that, right? So you got pull off. Those are all hitting C chord tones. If I bend it up, I'm bending into the third of the C right there. Okay, so great C lick, okay? Now when I get to the D, I'm throwing in the major third. So that gives me another note. So, so far I have the third of the G. Now I have the third of the D chord. So Now if I did octaves, that would give me So, so I'm starting to get a mode, right? 
Now, a lot of us think of, you know, the mode's just basically a major scale, but, you know, depending on, you know, all the shapes are the same, I guess I should say. So all these three note patterns, which are make up the modes, right? They're all the same seven three note per string, you know, patterns, right? And it just depends on how you place them in the chords that you're playing over, which determine what the modes are, right? But that's a lot to think about if you're in the beginning stages of soloing, but you know pentatonic. That's why I pay attention more to the chords, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I got pentatonic. Like watch, if I, if I jam on my chord progression, I can just play all my A minor pentatonic. Now that sounds great, totally, you know, full rock, classic rock sound, but you want to get a little more sophisticated, you can add some of those thirds, right, of the G chord and the D chord in there, and you got, you know, a little bit more kind of, you know, hip, metal sounding kind of thing. That's all just kind of pentatonic playing. I didn't play three note per string scales per se. I mean, you could do the, all that kind of, you know, ripping metal stuff. And that, you know, let me give you the actual three note per string pattern to mess around with around position one. Okay, so position one A minor pentatonic would be. Okay, there's our, our typical pattern. But if I want to take it to the three notes per string, I could do something like this. If you just took those notes, right, and you just figured out what every one of those notes were, you could figure out the rest of the, you know, the scale shapes up the neck. And it's great. I mean, knowing your modes is a huge benefit if you don't want to just play classic rock or you want to add a little bit of ear candy to your solos and not, you know, sometimes just playing pentatonic, it gets boring. So that's why I mix major and minor pentatonic. Or I do things like this where I actually don't know what the mode is called, and you guys can answer in the comments below what the mode is called, of those of you who know. But I know the chords, right? I got an A minor, a G, C, it's fine. Now when you start adding in the chromatic runs to go with it, so you get a cool run like that. Okay, so that's bending up a half step. And then I go add the blues notes. So that's seven, eight, and then down to five. And then I go eight, seven, five, seven, jump down to B. Do that run like I did in the beginning. Where I just added in the third of the G and I went. Alright, so it's four, five, four. And then I jump to seven. And then I go. So, or you can go. Come back to that that fourth fret. Right. So keep in mind. Just think about when those chords are coming. The G. Right. So that would go. 
the G to the D. Check this out. So we got. That works from this to here because I'm hitting the G notes, right? But when I go here, I'm sliding into a D, right? So totally works over that chord. So start really, and I know I harp on this all the time, but really pay attention to the notes of the chords and how they fit into your scale because that's going to give you the modes. I, I know tons of session guitar players that just rip beyond belief. And honestly, they don't know what a lot of them don't know what the modes are. I mean, they know the shapes, but they know chords everywhere. And that's what makes the biggest difference. They can play over any progression they want because they know what key they're in or they can, you know, modulate keys. They know how to play over chord changes, not just scale shapes. And that therein lies all the difference, right? If you can see the chords as they're coming, and then use your scale as kind of the framework, you're freaking gold. So, that's just major pentatonic, sounds great, or minor pentatonic, I should say. gotta just you know keep going and choking at the end but that's half the fun choking <laughs> that's how you learn right you gotta you gotta fall flat on your face but so take if you have some way of recording yourself you know everyone's got an iphone or you know i shouldn't say everyone but people have a phone there's there's some sort of recording device near you somewhere and if you don't have a phone your friend's got a phone record this you know progression a minor G, C, D major, A minor, G, D. So that, you know, I just stuck to Or, that's G. Oh, remember you got it here? You got your G here? Then you got your D. Right, so... That, that G to D move, it could be as simple as... Right? Position four. You want to just get away from these two notes which are in the a minor pentatonic scale grab this d note so right there's a note out of the out of the d chord So there is life outside of the pentatonic on this channel and I love it and it's awesome. Although, you know, I'll say this about the modes, use them sparingly because what can happen is as you learn the scale shapes, the first thing we want to do is just run the patterns. I did it for 4,000 years. My neighbors must have wanted to jump out a window at some point and it almost kind of went backwards rather than just seeing the chords and playing around the chord shapes. Right, and trying to make music not run scales. That's the most important thing I can tell you. Give it a shot. It's super, super fun. If you like what you've seen, obviously subscribe to the channel because there's more where that came from. Tell your friends and share the videos. That's a big thank you to me.
from you is just spreading the word. And if you want to support the cause and ensure the free videos keep coming, because this is how I make a living, go to brettpapa.com and check out some of the courses. I also added some new stuff there that nobody's seen before. So check it out. You may, and some guests. There's guests now on brettpapa.com. So check it out. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time.